Hello and welcome to the channel. As you will have seen, Simply Birding has made this month of August Raptor Month. Now before we launch into this first of our series of RD videos on raptors, I would like to ask you to subscribe to the channel, hit the notification bell, and you will be notified the moment our next video lands, and there's going to be a series of them over the course of August focusing on raptors. And we're going to take you from the first steps of separating your raptors into families, and by the end of the month, we're going to tackle large brown eagle identification. But getting back to raptor month, first off, books. What books are available to help take your raptor ID to the next level? Obviously, there's a range of field guides for Southern Africa already. I'm not going to mention any particular one because I don't want to specifically be endorsing one field guide over another. They all deal with our raptors equally well. But there are a lot of specialized books that can take your knowledge to the next level. Some of them are out of print, some of them still in print, but essentially, you're going to have to look for some of these, and a lot of them are overseas books, and Amazon's a very good source. So, first off, there is Dick Forsman's book, The Raptors of Europe and the Middle East. And he really is considered one of the world's authorities on raptors. I can highly recommend that book. Then, Collins also has a very specialized book, The Collins Birds of Prey. Both these books are highly recommended, particularly when dealing with the less regularly seen migratory raptors when you're confronted with a tricky identification. In addition to that, um, there is the Sassel Birds of Prey by Alan and Meg Kemp, a very good book. And then there's my personal favorite, Raptors of the World. There are two versions. There's the smaller field guide, which I take everywhere with me. Uh, still very effective for raptor identification. And then the exact same plates. There's the larger version, Raptors of the World. And that has a lot more text to back up the exact same plates that are in the field guide version. If you're not going to order both, I would get this one because it has much more detailed text. But I like having both because ultimately this is my text-based reference work at home and the field guide I take with me. So if you're going to top up your library and expand your, your library to be able to deal with raptors, there's a collection of some of the books I would recommend. But now, our first series of videos on raptors is dealing with tails. And the question is, what does a 707, an F-16, and a Raptor have in common when it comes to identification? And the obvious thing, as I've mentioned, is the tail. And let me explain why. So let's forget the Raptors for a second and look at something we all generally know well and understand. A Boeing 707 cruises at high altitude, it has passengers on board, it doesn't make the dramatic banking turns and flight maneuvers a fighter jet would have to make, and it's designed with long broad wings and a tail that helps it steer. And this is the important bit, is the tail and how it plays a role in steering the aircraft. If you look at an F-16, the wings are a lot shorter, and the tail in relation to the wings is a different size, allowing an F-16 to make rapid banking movements. And the same comes into play with Raptors. Now what you need to understand here is that that tail length, like you have passenger airliners and you have fighter jets, the different families of Raptors have different tail structures based on where they fly, how they fly, and the sort of prey they're after. So let's take the large raptors. You've got eagles, you've got vultures, you've got a lot of the soaring birds. They don't need to make dramatic banking turns. And again, it's, it's the tail that really drives the turning. So 
they tend to have short tails. There's no need to carry a long tail with a lot of drag if you're never going to need to use it to steer excessively and, and very fast. So again, the large soaring birds have shorter tails and often these tails are at rest at most as long as the wings, in some cases, the wings extend beyond the tail. Then you get to some of the birds like sparrow hawks and goshawks. They hunt in woodland. And if you think about the process of hunting in woodland, you need to chase after birds darting through trees. And I'm sure when you've seen sparrow hawks or goshawks flying away in woodland, they make quite dramatic turns moving in between the trees. Because of this, they require a long tail. And the tail on these birds is often significantly longer and extends well past the wing when the bird is at rest. So how does this play a factor in IRD? Well, I mean, obviously the sparrow hawks and goshawks in full adult plumage tend to be fairly obvious. But let's take something trickier. And people often debate on IRD discussions, particularly with a certain juvenile bird, is it a juvenile African harrier hawk or is it a juvenile black sparrow hawk? Now straight away there, eagle, sparrow hawk in the same debate. Let's go back and think about the tail. A hawk eagle, what does it do? It takes off from the tops of trees, it soars around looking for its prey, it doesn't hunt in dense woodland. As a result, it's got a shorter tail. And you can see with this juvenile African hawk eagle that its tail is relatively short in relation to the wings. Now, let's have a look at a juvenile black sparrow hawk. And you can see just how incredibly long that tail is. So, it really is the very first point of departure when dealing with Raptor ID. Look at the tail length, decide, are you dealing with an eagle? Are you dealing with a sparrow hawk? Are you dealing with a buzzard? And from there, you move on to your next step. And the next step in separating different families of raptors will come in our next video in the series of raptor videos for the month of August. But start looking at the tail. It's your best place to decide which family of raptor you're dealing with. And often it will immediately rule out, say, an African hawk eagle or a black sparrow hawk when you get to those sorts of debates. So I hope you found this first of our series of videos on raptors helpful. And there's a lot more to come for this month. So please, again, like, subscribe to the channel, hit the notification bell, share this video with your friends. And let's make August an awesome Raptor Month.